If you go back to the early universe right after the Big Bang, you would witness a phase where the cosmos was expanding far faster than the speed of light. This is a puzzling but important aspect of early cosmology, a period known as cosmic inflation. During this time, the universe underwent an extraordinary rapid expansion in a fraction of a second, increasing in size exponentially. It's a concept that's difficult to grasp but essential to understanding the formation of the universe as we know it. Interestingly, this idea parallels a revolution in understanding similar to how Nicholas Copernicus presented the heliocentric model, which radically shifted humanity's view of our place in the universe. We might now be on the verge of another monumental shift in our cosmic understanding, and this time, it concerns the very fabric of the universe itself. A heated debate has arisen in modern cosmology, a field that continually grapples with new discoveries that challenge old theories. This debate is referred to as the crisis of cosmology. Prominent astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has remarked that recent findings from the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, have intensified this debate, bringing new evidence to light that has the potential to shatter some long-held views in physics. The JWST, with its unprecedented ability to peer into the farthest reaches of the universe, is changing the landscape of our understanding. But what exactly is this crisis, and how has the JWST contributed to it? For some long-time researchers, or old-timers, in cosmology, it's hard to even call it a crisis. Yet, as much as some resist the term, this situation is indeed a crisis. Why? Well, for a long time, we thought we had a pretty good handle on the age and size of the universe, two critical factors that are deeply related. In the past, we didn't know these with much certainty, and estimates varied widely, sometimes by a factor of two. However, new data has continually forced us to refine these estimates, sometimes leading to results that don't quite fit within the existing framework of our cosmological understanding. Join us as we delve into the frontiers of science, where our knowledge is constantly being tested, and new, unanticipated discoveries are emerging. This is where the exciting, standard model of cosmology comes into play. For over a century, astronomers and physicists have constructed a framework that explains the universe's past and present. This model, often referred to as the Lambda Cold Dark Matter CDM, model, incorporates general relativity and paints a comprehensive picture of the universe's evolution. Gravity, as guided by Einstein's theory of general relativity, plays a key role, dictating the formation of massive cosmic structures and explaining the universe's ongoing expansion. According to this model, the universe consists of various components, dark energy, dark matter, normal matter, like stars, planets, and gas, neutrinos, and photons. The universe is thought to have originated from the hot Big Bang, about 13.8 billion years ago. Before this, the universe underwent a period of cosmic inflation, which introduced tiny imperfections in density that later seeded the formation of galaxies and stars. But what if we told you that this very model, which has shaped our understanding for over a century, is now under scrutiny? Despite the strong observational support for the standard cosmological model, it's starting to show signs of incompleteness. As more observations roll in, each new piece of data must be examined in the context of the model to see if it still holds up. The problem is that the more we observe, especially with the cutting-edge technology provided by tools like the James Webb Space Telescope, the more inconsistencies we seem to find. JWST, for instance, is providing astronomers with a clearer view of the early universe than ever before, revealing new insights into the formation of galaxies that appear to challenge our long-standing models. Let's start with what we know. The standard cosmological model, which includes the idea of an inflationary hot Big Bang and is supported by the Lambda Cold Dark Matter framework, has been remarkably successful in explaining various features of the universe. For example, it explains gravitational lensing, the bending of light around massive objects, the structure and growth of the cosmic web, internal motions of galaxies, and the relative motions within groups and clusters. It even accounts for the cosmic microwave background, CMB, a relic light from the universe's infancy. This model predicts that as we peer farther into the past and observe more distant galaxies, those galaxies should appear smaller, bluer, less developed, and poorer in heavy elements like carbon and oxygen. At some point, we expect to reach the so-called dark ages of the universe, time before stars or galaxies existed. 
Yet, while attempting to confirm these predictions, astronomers have discovered conflicting evidence, resulting in what is now being called a crisis of cosmology. The cosmology crisis is actually quite straightforward, we don't really know the precise age of the universe. Different methods give different results, and cosmologists are struggling to figure out why. To measure the age of the universe, scientists rely on two main methods. The first involves studying the cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang. By analyzing the expansion history of the universe using Einstein's theory of general relativity, scientists apply the Friedman equations, which link the universe's composition, dark matter, dark energy, and radiation, to its expansion rate at specific times. This method allows us to estimate the universe's age based on its content. The CMB provides an essential snapshot of the universe when it was about 380,000 years old. Detailed maps of this radiation, such as those produced by the European Space Agency's Planck mission, offer insights into the makeup of the universe. However, these maps are not without their limitations, they lack direct data on dark energy, which plays a significant role in the current expansion of the universe. Since dark energy didn't have much influence on the early universe, its effects must be incorporated manually, based on other observations. Despite these challenges, the CMB method provides a robust way to estimate the age of the universe. The second method of determining the universe's age involves studying exploding stars, specifically type IA supernovae. These celestial events occur when a white dwarf star accretes matter from a nearby star until it reaches a critical mass and explodes. Supernovae are considered standard candles because their brightness is predictable, allowing astronomers to measure cosmic distances by comparing their expected and observed brightness. This method was crucial in the discovery of dark energy in the late 1990s and continues to be a cornerstone of cosmological measurements today. It's particularly useful for determining the Hubble constant, a measure of the universe's expansion rate. Although the Hubble constant isn't truly constant, it serves as a key yardstick for measuring the growth of the universe since the Big Bang. However, an interesting problem arose in 2018. Data from different telescopes, such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the Gaia Space Telescope, indicated that the universe's expansion rate varied depending on where and how it was measured. For instance, in the nearby universe, Hubble and Gaia measured a faster expansion rate of 45.6 km per second per megaparsec, while the Planck telescope observed a slower rate of 41.6 km per second per megaparsec in the more distant universe. This discrepancy, though small in cosmic terms, points to a deeper issue in our understanding of the universe's expansion and age. These two methods, studying the cosmic microwave background and observing supernovae, disagree on the universe's age and expansion rate. As our measurement technology becomes more refined, these small differences become more noticeable, highlighting the need for new theories or corrections in our models. However, even with this inconsistency, the estimated difference in the universe's age is only about 10 to 20 million years, a tiny fraction when considering that the universe is roughly 13.8 billion years old. But despite this minor discrepancy, it's significant enough to warrant further investigation. One potential explanation for this inconsistency could involve flaws in our CMB measurements, though the Planck mission CMB readings have been rigorously tested and validated. Another possibility is that we don't fully understand dark energy, and it may be changing over time or interacting with dark matter in unexpected ways. Alternatively, there could be minor inaccuracies in the supernova measurements, since the physics of exploding stars is complex and not yet fully understood. In addition to this, the James Webb Space Telescope has added another layer of complexity to the cosmology crisis. According to Neil deGrasse Tyson, the JWST has made discoveries that challenge the current understanding of the universe. Specifically, it has found galaxies that, according to our models, should not exist at such an early point in cosmic history. These findings indicate that we might need to revise our models, but scientists are unsure where to start. To understand why this is such a big deal, we need to go back to the beginning. After the Big Bang, the first stars, black holes, and star clusters likely formed around 150 million years later, possibly as early as 50 to 100 million years afterward. However, we thought these events were relatively rare in the early universe. JWST has shown us galaxies much more distant, and consequently older, than we ever thought possible, 
raising serious questions about our standard cosmological model. The problem lies in the age redshift relation which connects the distance of an object to its age since the Big Bang. These galaxies seem to have formed far too early for our models to explain, leading to a significant crisis in cosmology. In response to these challenges, scientists are turning to even more advanced tools and simulations to solve the mysteries of the universe. One such project is called Flamingo, which is part of the Virgo Consortium, a collective of cosmologists running some of the largest supercomputer simulations of the universe. Flamingo aims to simulate the entire universe from the Big Bang until today, modeling both dark matter and ordinary matter in unprecedented detail. This simulation compares the evolution of cosmic structures with real-world observations, like those made by JWST, in the hopes of figuring out whether the lambda cold dark matter model is still valid. As history has shown, science evolves. Major changes have happened before, whether it was Copernicus' heliocentric revolution or Einstein's general theory of relativity. These moments led to a fundamental restructuring of our understanding of the universe. Now, we may be standing at the edge of yet another revolution. As JWST continues to provide groundbreaking data, and as projects like Flamingo push the boundaries of simulation, our understanding of the universe may be about to shift once again. And as unsettling as it may seem to question the fundamental principles of the cosmos, such moments have historically led to the most exciting advancements in human knowledge.